I am. I am. A lot of times, I mean, pretty much in any game, you know, I find out the bad more than I find out what I did good. I don't like to be associated with a loser, being a loser. Honestly, I mean, I, I, I got a competitive spirit. If, I mean, if you ain't got a mindset to win, if you happy being second, I can't deal with you. My mom would probably have that same kind of spirit, um, always wanting to win. But I don't know. I, I was the only boy, I guess, and you know what I mean? All my friends were, were older than me. So I kind of had to compete and, and had to have an edge to me, I, I feel like. I took, I took a lot of losses, um, again, because I was always playing against older people. And when he was little, I'd come over him and his dad and his uh, couple of guys be in the, in the front yard playing basketball, and I mean, he'd be taking it to the, he'd be having them, all, <laughs> having them going. The boys hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but he was always competitive, even in the driveway, he was, when they'd be playing, I'd pull up, and they'd be out there balling. After we lose, uh, I'm, I'm emotional, I get mad. He know if I lose, it's not because I didn't do my part. And he, he overly do his part for a win. If we lost, I don't really like to talk. My parents don't text me. I mean, they'll send me, they'll send me a text, in a good game, son. Um, but, I mean, after that, I like to be left alone. He doesn't take a loss. If he <laughs> take a loss, it does not shit It's work. from anything. You're from, gonna, from you tic-tac-toe, he's gonna he keep gotta playing. Win. No, like, like, he has to win. Fishing, you gotta catch more fishes than you. I and catch, he will. Yeah, he's not. Uh, I catch attitude if I lose. <laughs> um, I mean, anything is serious if I lose. As long as I can remember, my older sister played basketball growing up, and uh, she's the one that I really followed um, as far as, you know, seeing it, you know, from a visual, you know what I mean, going to her travel games and, you know, going to different cities, and I mean, that's all I used to remember, and uh, all the traveling and all the new places she got to see um, all came from, you know, her playing basketball. My dad was the only one that worked. Um, early on, my mom had a stroke. So, uh, I mean, that really limited us um, growing up. And, you know what I mean? I was fortunate for what I had, but, you know what I mean? What I had wasn't much. Um, and, I mean, that, that kind of just made me the hard worker and the person I am today. I mean, I just progressed every year. Um, I mean, from being a little kid, I was always, I wasn't the most talented. I was always the tallest kid, but I wasn't the most talented at the time. And my thing was, my coaches used to make me play center growing up. And I used to hate that. Um, I always wanted to be a guard. I mean, me still being the biggest kid, you know what I mean? They, I was just forced to play that position. So what I would do is work on my ball handling nonstop. Just, I'll put chairs out, try to cross over the chairs, split through the chairs. And that kind of just, you know, made me, you know what I mean? Being able to handle at 6'10 now, 6'9 now, um, I mean, that really, you know, changed my whole skill set up. When my freshman year, I started out, I think I was like, maybe I was like six foot, six one. Going into my sophomore year, I probably was about six four, six five. Going into my junior year, I was probably like six six, six seven. My senior year, I was about six eight. And then, uh, you know, I just kept going gradually after that. Night, <laughs> night would come. Where's Paul? Still outside. <laughs> what is Paul doing? Basketball, okay. It was mostly basketball. That was his love, his passion. Well, growing up, my uh, favorite team was the Clippers. I was a big Kobe fan, but the Clippers, that was my squad. I mean, they, they was just fun basketball. You know what I mean? It wasn't one individual guy, you know what I mean? It was a whole team. They had L.O., you know what I mean? Quentin Richardson, Darius Miles. I mean, that was, that was a team that could go. From left to right, uh, my best friend from back home, tight end B.A. My big bro, Jason Chambers, and my boy from back home, Miles Williams, YT. <laughs> Goose is non star, Paul star, we got to get it around. Uh -huh. My name is known around the town. I hold it down, it's Pat Gang, and we just coming now. Uh -huh. He's a rapper, okay? I, I make the music, so I mean, he, 
And whether he wants to or not, he's going to hear it in the crib with the speaker. Yeah, well, so. Whether I got it or not, you know what I mean? If I hear a beat, I'm going to get on that. Uh, uh, and I'm trying, he's trying to stack the yeah. chips, stack the cake. I know it bakes. Right. Put it in the oven, let it heat it, let it melt. I don't know. I'm just getting dope. <laughs> the good thing about us, we're a pack, and we know who our pack is, and we know the people that's not a part of our pack in a sense, and we know who to feed off of and who not to feed off of, and we just leave it alone. You know what I mean? We don't play too much into it, but we know that it's there where people are try to, you know, bring us apart and this and that and the other. That's why we try to stay close as possible and keep our uh, our box. We don't even call it a circle. We try to keep our box uh, close as possible and look out for each other within that box. It do get difficult. Um, you know what I mean, you just grow apart from you know friends that you know you really grew up with. Uh, I mean, I think it's natural. I mean, and these they've been the one that's you know what I mean really been down since day one. The one that's really been the most loyal. And uh, I mean, I, most of the stuff I do, I really couldn't do a lot of it. I mean, strictly video games. <laughs> video games, laughing, video, video games, joking, just joking, around, freestyling, jokes. Yeah. eating. Uh, I'm consistently beating this man in FIFA. Nah. Since we, since oh, you, <laughs> you talking about Jason? No, I'm the best out of everybody in, in the video game system. They not lose, lose to me. Or, no lose to me. I will let you hear it from when we wake up <laughs> to when we go to bed. <laughs> you know, I'll even send him a text like, you know, all right. <laughs> I ain't mean that. You good? I was recruited probably by about, maybe about, you know, 20 or 30 teams. I chose Fresno because, uh, I mean, all my, most of my big time um, scholarships all was East Coast teams. And uh, at the time, I just wasn't ready to go far from home. So, uh, I mean, Fresno was really the next, the next option as far as me coming in, being able to play right away and being close to home. His freshman year in college, I saw it. He always had the dog in him, I would see it, but far as just, you know, within the third year of actually becoming an all-star, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I would probably, like, the type of person that I am and people do know how I am, I would probably say I saw it, you know, his, his sophomore year. I mean, that was my dreams. Um, to be honest, I didn't think it would have came around as, as fast as, you know, being talked about being in the NBA after my freshman year. Um, you know, I, I knew I, I would have had a shot, you know, being in college a couple of years, but I didn't think it would have came around as fast as, you know, GMs and, you know, teams coming out to look at me after my freshman year. Well, after, right after our season ended, after my sophomore year, I put out a, a tweet saying that I was going to enter the, uh, the draft. And, you know, now you only get so long to where you can really, I guess, test the waters. Um, so it's kind of a quick decision whether you're going to stay or you're going to go. And uh, I mean, I had once, you know, I talked to my family and everything and made that decision. My mind was really set on that, you know, it was really playing into my hands. You know, not a lot of people seeing me, not a lot of guys that, you know, played in the big conferences see me. I mean, really, I had a chip on my shoulder and I felt like I was the biggest person in that draft that had a dog in him to uh, really go out and prove myself. That's just, that's, that's been my role. Um, I mean, that's, that's just been my role that I played. It's the underdog. I wasn't a, a, a McDonald's, I wasn't even a, a McDonald's honoree. You know what I mean? And you know, here I am, I was averaging almost 30 in high school. So uh, I, just, I just been a dog, just been a dog in me. That might've been the toughest decision I've made, um, you know, so far was to stay or to go. And I mean, the minute my family heard lottery talks, they was like, you gotta go. Like, you, you gotta get out. Um, you know what I mean? Not only is this a great opportunity for you, but for the family as well. So, uh, I mean, I, I talk to everybody. I talk to my coaches, my teammates, you know, family, close friends. The good phone calls like, like yeah, y'all ready. You know what I mean? Go out there, go to the combines, work hard, do this and that and the other. He's definitely ready. And I mean, it all came down to, you know, collectively, you know, they all thought, you know, I should have should have went on to the NBA. You know, when we got the call, that he was going to be drafted, we knew. We were, we were on a train. He and I were together, and he had this <laughs> Indiana hat on because he lived in Indiana. And I said, what are you doing before we got off the train? He said, um, 
I'm going to wear my hat. I said, don't wear that hat because you don't even know if they're going to pick him for Indiana. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to Indiana. So when they called for a name, I said, oh, Indiana. He said, man, you told me to take my hat off. Now, I could have had my hat on Coming representing out. Indiana. And I'm mad at you, girl. But he, he knew Paul yeah. was going to get picked for Indiana. I was ready to, you know what I mean, go away from my parents. You know, I mean, it still was basketball and it was my dream, so I think everything else was just overshadowed. It was almost perfect to me, you know what I mean, if I was, they was talking about me being a lottery pick at the time, you know what I mean, Clippers had the eighth pick. I'm like, man, it's possible I could stay home. So uh, that's where I wanted to end up. I wanted to end up in LA. I was the complete opposite. I didn't want him to go to the Clippers, to be honest with you, because by him growing up and, uh, in LA, um, LA is very fast paced, especially for a young person. And he got drafted his sophomore year, you know what I mean? And he got all type of crazy stuff from friends, a lot of distractions. And I'm not saying that he wasn't up to the task, because I knew, you know, he was, but being in the NBA and having money and all that type of stuff, it's a different type of world, you know what I mean? So I was kind of happy for him to go off to Indiana, a little, you know, slower pace, you know and just go from there. It's, uh, it's real slower in Indiana. I mean, you got cornfields, and it's just a whole different atmosphere. Um, you know I mean, being in California, I mean, you're used to city life, you're used to up, you know what I mean, up-tempo, fast. Um, you know, being able to do something, being able to have somewhere to go. Indiana's a little different. At the time, you know what I mean, the only way it was seeming like I could get on the court was to play defense. That's how I became the defender I am now, is, I mean, really trying to, you know, go out there and guard guys, because I knew that's what coach wanted. And, you know, we didn't really have a guy that could really guard, you know, the way that I've been guard now. So, um, you know, once I was able to put my hands on that and coach gave me the opportunity, um, I kind of just ran with it from there. So anytime I get a chance to play guys like LeBron, you know, it's a chance for me to showcase not only on the defensive end, but on the offensive end, offensive end as well. You know, so I'm always ready, and I get up, you know, real fast for games like that. I got into a couple of battles, um, but the first real one is is probably uh, Petrus. Every time you play that that player, you know what I mean, you you want to get the best of them. It started back when we went to Celtics. At the time, he was playing with the Celtics, and I mean, he, it just got real physical for whatever reason. Um, we got after it, and then when he came to Indiana to play us. It was part two, round two. And I mean, right there, it kind of escalated to a higher stage to where from since then, I've never played him again. So I don't know if it'll die down, but I know next time we'll go out there and play him. You know I mean, I know, I know the history between us. It's tough guard Melo. Melo might be the toughest person for me to match up with. He just, he brings so much. Uh, I mean, offensively, um, I mean, he's got the speed, the size, the strength. You know what I mean? He shoot the, the lights out. Uh, I mean, he's just physical. Um, so it's it's a tough cover because you play him too close. You know, he's going to try to get you to the basket. If you back off, I mean, he's going to hit you from outside. So you got to pick your poison when you guard Melo. And he always look at Kobe playing and say, that's my favorite player. You know, one day I'm going to be like him. One day I'm going to be like him, you know? I mean, my first time playing against him was uh, my sophomore year, uh, second year in the league. I didn't play against him my rookie year. Uh, you know what I mean? Just being a rookie, not being able to suit up. And uh, I mean, so the first time, I mean, I was a little bit in awe. You know what I mean? I was Kobe Bryant, you know what I mean? Looked up to him, grew up watching him. It didn't really hit me until, you know what I mean? The first time I checked him and I got a cheap shot from him. I think he, uh, I think he went into the post and he just threw like an elbow, mean elbow. You know what I mean, I would, I'm, I'm bigger than I am now, but you know, <laughs> then, I mean, I was tiny, so I felt that one. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I licked my wounds, but I knew, uh, you know what I mean, from then on, it was a game. You know, every summer, uh, you know, obviously, because I'm, you know, more years in the league, more time for people to see my face, but it just seems like every year, you know, comes around, it's, it gets amplified that much more. And uh, I mean, now it, it is to the level where I'm pretty noticeable, um, you know, whenever I go out, so. In a city like this to, you know, you know, have fans walk up to him and 
ask for an autograph and little stuff like that. It's, 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 it's very fun. I mean, I'm not, never been an arrogant dude, nothing like that, so it's cool. I love it. I love to see little kids ask for his autograph because growing up, that's what he wanted, you know what I mean? So it's, like, I love it. Don't show your best moves now. I'll save wait, some for last. Wait, wait for the music. It's your boy right here, man. Hollywood streets, man. Straight from Brooklyn. I'm out here, man. All Star Week in 2013. Hanging out with my man PG, Paul George, the real star, Indiana Pacers, man. We doing it big out here. Everybody, watch out for my nigga Paul George, man. He about to take this shit over. You heard? Brooklyn, man. As soon as we found out, you know, Danny was gonna be hurt and, and out for the season or, you know what I mean, for extended time. Um, I mean, I knew really the burden was on me and I was gonna have to carry this team. I knew we was gonna be okay because we had those guys, but I knew the level that Danny played at, you know what I mean, bringing in 20 a night and, you know what I mean, being able to guard, you know what I mean, as well. I knew I was gonna have to not play the same role, but carry the same weight he did. And I think I stressed out a little bit too much to start the year off, the reason why I wasn't playing well. And I mean, once it start, you know what I mean, things start to slow down, I start coming into my role, you know what I mean, it start getting a lot easier for me. I think we've proved to beat the elite teams and the teams that are getting all the recognition right now. And I mean, for whatever reason, we are getting looked over. Against Chicago, at Chicago. Well, before um, we played Chicago, we played Golden State and I had zero that night. It was a weird night. It just felt like I was I was out of place. Um, I mean, that kind of night just felt like I wouldn't, I don't know where I was supposed to be on the court. Just things wasn't clicking for me that night. And uh, I mean, I understand players go through it, but you know what I mean? That's, that's a feeling I want to limit. Well, fortunately, we had a long flight back then, yeah. Um, so I had a lot of time to think about uh, what I needed to change. And I mean, me being competitive, and immediately after we flew back to Indiana, I went into the gym and got 500 shots up. Um, Cause I just had a scoreless game. And I tried, I changed up my whole preparation and you know, how I get ready for games now. And after that, we flew to Chicago to play Chicago. And I mean, I lit it up at 34 that night. And I mean, the reason why that was so special was cause I mean, for one, it's hard to go into Chicago and beat them. I mean, period. And, you know, every shot that I shot, you know what I mean, I, I pretty much made. And those shots that I made, if I didn't make those, we probably would have lost. We were looking like we were winless that night. I was happy. Um, I, I, was, I was real happy. I called my parents up. Uh, you know I mean, I talked to everybody. My brother, my agent, um, everybody from back home. I mean, I was getting love from everybody. Dream was to make it in the NBA. And, you know, the next step was to be an all-star in the NBA. But he used to tell people like, okay, I'm a rookie right now. Uh, my, by my third year or fourth year, I'm gonna be an all-star. And uh, people used to laugh at him in the locker room. And little stuff like that, it add more fuel to him. Like, I'm gonna prove people wrong. Like, that's how we think, you know? And he made it. He gonna be the franchise leader, I think. I believe that. He's loyal. I mean, I really want to compete for something. You know what I mean? Not just being in the league. Because I want to play ball. I want to actually, you know what I mean, try to win. So I think that'll probably be the biggest, uh, biggest, you know what I mean, reason for me to stay in Indiana is, uh, you know, who's on the roster at the time. And every summer he just goes hard and he wants to get better. So, I mean, I knew it was coming eventually. And we talked about it this summer and how we was going to make it happen. And we came out with a whole nother mentality. So I was expecting it the whole time, honestly. It's just a dream come true. You know, hard work and dedication does pay off for everybody that's out there. Like, hard work and dedication. And if you believe it can happen in the world, that's practically it. We all knew. 
So definitely inspiration. You can see it coming from your circle. So, so. Uh, me, you know, I, I met P uh, his rookie year, and um, ever since his rookie year, I just seen each year he just progressed, you know. And um, this year, when I seen him start playing, I'm just like, man, this, you know, he got an opportunity, you know. And um, and I told him, I said, P, like, this is your year to shine, man. And um, man, he hasn't let me down yet. So, you know, just coming out here, it was just like a pleasure, man, because I wanted to see him, like, you know, his first year really make an all-star team. And that's, it's a blessing, man. He's so humble to the blessing, you know. He recognizes that it, he's not taking it for granted because he could be doing so many other things than doing something he loved, you know. But to him, it's a love, it's a passion, it's him. I couldn't see him in a, any other event or anything to do other than this. To reach, you know, this, the status that I've reached now, I mean, it's only like the stepping stone to, you know, where I want to end up being. But, I mean, for them to continue to keep pushing me is the reason why, you know what I mean, I do go hard every summer and do want to get better. I don't get nothing out of it, but, you know what I mean, this is just what I love to do. You know, I love playing basketball. You know, this has been my dream since day one, so, you know what I mean, it's, if, if I can help my boys, you know, the ones that grew up with me, the ones that are still here with me, I mean, that's, that's what I do it for. Right now, we, uh, you know, we had a blast yesterday. Um, you know, competed in a three-point contest. Um, you know, was able to hang out with the family prior to it, you know, get a real chill. Feeling out here in Houston. You know, I wish I could have took home the golden three-point contest, but you know what I mean it, it is what it is. I'm a I'm a game time shooter. And I just keep it at that. But uh I mean right now we headed over for the all-star game. You know, hopefully uh you know better turnout. I mean I expect no defense to be played, but uh, I mean guys just going out there showing you know what they're capable of and uh you know I mean just having a lot of fun and um, you know what I mean trying to keep the crowd in. This is where I wanted to be, this is the main stage. And just trying to represent my team well, my city well, and you know what I mean, my game well. Well, you know what I mean, from the top, you know, the scarf is <laughs> from Gucci, uh, as well as the shoes. And you know what I mean, this piece right here is, is from my man's Reggie Puckett, Phenom 24-7, his clothing line. So, uh, you know, he got me dressed right. Uh, shout out my man, Drew Holiday. You know what I mean, one of the league's best point guards. <laughs> Got the bow tie cracking. <laughs> East Coast in the building. <laughs> From the West Coast. West Coast cast. Represent the East right now, though. Young fellas. It's the takeover, baby. Next step is, 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 is winning the championship, I think, after this. Uh, I feel like we got a real shot to do it this year, honestly. If I can continue to, you know what I mean, play the way that I've been playing and, you know, helping this team win, you know, the way I, that I've been doing so. That's talking about, you know what I mean, you look at the teams like the Miami that plays with two superstars or two stars on the wing. I think that's how me and Danny can play off each other. First official All-Star game. I had a blast, 17 points, a couple big shots. Uh, you know what I mean? Tried to make some plays alongside some great players and to be able to guard some great players. Uh, you know, I'm mad we didn't win, but you know, tonight I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my night with my family. Go ahead and get a little grub in. I appreciate y'all for experiencing my first All-Star weekend. You know, it's been fun, but y'all ain't gotta go home. Y'all can enjoy Houston a little bit. But right now, y'all gotta get the hell up out of here. Peace. Oh my God. Season two, well done. Crazy. Thank you guys, because I honestly didn't think you guys would like it well done. But you guys like it well done. So thank you for that. Love it. Come on. Who doesn't like it well done? Wait. I do. Oh, no. I do. Close Sessions is an independent record label that we started here in Chicago. When an artist comes here, we put them in the studio with the goal to show what makes an artist unique, which is the creation of their art. And it's dope because Currency did our first ever closed session record.
I am. I am. A lot of times. And he he overly do his part for a win. If we lost, I don't really like to talk. My parents don't text me. I mean, they'll send me they'll send me a text. In good game, son. Um, but I mean, after that, I like to be left alone. He doesn't take loss. <laughs> take loss and just not shit. It's work. from anything. You're from, gonna from you tic tac toe. He's gonna he keep gotta playing. You know, like he has to win. Fishing, you gotta catch more fishes than you. I and catch. he will. Yeah, he's not. Uh, I catch attitude if I lose. <laughs> Edge to me. I, I feel like I took I took a lot of losses. Um, again, because I was always playing against older people. And when he was little, I'd come over him and his dad and his uh, couple of guys be in the, in the front yard playing basketball. And I mean, he'd be taking it to the, he'd be having them, all, having them going. Oh, boys hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but he was always competitive. Even in the driveway, he was, when they'd be playing, I'd pull up and they'd be out there balling. After we lose, uh, I'm, I'm emotional. I get mad. Yeah. He know if I lose, it's not because I didn't do my part. I mean, pretty much. In any game, you know, I find out the bad more than I find out what I did good. I don't like to be associated with a loser, being a loser. Honestly, I mean, I, I, I got a competitive spirit. If, I mean, if you ain't got a mindset to win, if you happy being second, I can't deal with you. My mom would probably have that same kind of spirit, um, always wanting to win. But I don't know. I, I was the only boy, I guess, and you know what I mean? All my friends were, were older than me. So I kind of had to compete and, and had to have it. Um, I mean, anything is serious if I lose. As long as I can remember, my older sister played basketball growing up. And uh, she's the one that I really followed um, as far as, you know, seeing it, you know, from a visual. You know what I mean? Going to her travel games and, you know, going to different cities. And I mean, that's all I used to remember. And. Uh, all the traveling and all the new places she got to see um, all came from, you know, her playing basketball. My dad was the only one that worked.